video I created yesterday on Friday, closing, um, which covered various things. I did start trading down well, and um, it was absolutely crap. So I closed off. Doggly, uh, doggly. I stopped trading that track, basically. Um, this is totally different. Look, this, this is the fake race on a Saturday. Um, look at the money being turned over. It's a lot higher. So this should be an opportunity to be able to make some money. Well, yesterday, were well, as I... I, um, I think the land over this, they'll have reached the halfway on. point in this three miler. And Frodon sees the fence attacks it and opens up daylight there from Manila Indo in second. Still nothing between Delta Work and Galvin, who raised three and four clear from Ravenhill. Now they begin the bend that's going to bring them towards the back straight and on towards fences nine through 12. And Frodon still three or four lengths clear from Manila Indo in second. Galvin racing just about in third at the expense of Delta Work and four as they begin to rise over the first the four along the back straight. Frodon popped into it, but still three or four clear from Manila Indo, who's still second. A good break of half a dozen or so to Galvin three, and then towards the outside, Delta Work and continuing, but some way behind is Raven Hill. They're about to make their way past their point of departure, which means they've got about a mile to race. Frodon leads from Manila Indo. They've got a good tempo throughout. Galvin and Delta Work still within sights, and they're clear from Raven Hill as they pass their you point see, like, of you take you can make the money back towards fence number 10 right in now. by about 4 to yeah, Manila okay. Indo as they come to rise over what was their first fence it takes them off on their second circuit they've just passed the mile pole Frodon jumped it well from Manila Indo and each obstacle I'm seems to you, widen man. the gap and Rachel Blackmore just got a little lower in the straddle there for a stride or two but the response was found as Manila Indo closed the gap a little it's going to be a good honest test here as they make their way on towards the two fences behind the club has out of the clear view of the grandstand. First a plane, then a ditch. Frodon over in front from in second. Manila Indo, Galvin Delta work. Now they come towards the final ditch. This is three from home. They won't be jumping the fence at the top of the hill. They have a long run of the level after this one. And Frodon meets it right clear from oh, Manila wait, Indo in second. Galvin and Delta work now need to begin reeling in this pair as they race now on the long, long run before they meet another obstacle. It's Frodon who's put it right up to them since the flag dropped in second. I'm out of Manila you, man. Indo, who's just needing a little encouragement to keep tabs getting a shade closer now both galvin and delta work and they're clear from the still continuing but detached raven hill so now they begin to make their way on towards the top of the track and the ladbrooks champion chase four times won by paul nichols taranis koto stone and twice koto star on here on the cross. rachel blackmore gives chase on manila indo then galvin and jamie cod and delta work and jack kennedy trying to improve as well but frodon is really turning it on down the hill manila indo's asked for max there you go, there's a 20 pound a scout. More to give and then Delta work, but down there they come. Game Just effort as always from Frodon from okay. Manila Indo. Galvin's picking up with Delta work on the outside of the Gold Cup winner, but it's the King George winner, Frodon. They're coming right on his tail now, that... now as they head down the hill towards the second last. Frodon is company now. Now, this race totally shows the difference. If you look back to that long video I did uh, with that, like I say, I didn't even trade that race. And now, because it's a big race, I've scouted it. This also shows the importance of the race time. I've made 20 quid basically by, uh, by uh, laying Galvin, scalping on that. You can see that price came back in right down to 1.4. This horse could still win the race. Um, and if I was still traded now, I could be in a lot of trouble. It might win, it might not. I don't know. It's going to be close, but it doesn't look like it is. But it could have won. And if, you know, I'd have been looking at a huge loss once the price had got down here. Market Wait, suspended. So important use the race timer like i say look the race timer ran out slightly before because they're faster horses uh, than the average speed of that race but yeah shows the importance of the race timer and shows the importance of liquidity on different days that is a really good example of that um if you haven't seen the other video um it's the one that talks about weak markets have a look at it best luck for now over fence number right, one, straight over again. These races are over. Faster Larry over was a little Ascot. slow at the back of the field, and one more getting flurry a break in between each race. His way into the lead with Sojourn racing along the track. They go over uh, fence number two, all regardless. safely over Larry again. Just let these settle down. At the back of the field, and on now towards the first of the open ditches. If you try and lay in at start, sometimes something will happen, and the horse will come in. Especially if you don't realise it's a front runner, and then you can be in a bad position. I always like to let the first. 
and uh, there's a fall at the back of the field. Down there is Jerry's back. Jerry's back has fallen at fence number three. Horses up. Tom O'Brien sitting up. One more flurry takes them over fence number four at the bottom of the hill, and we've lost one there. That was John BB has so gone. Win these races John BB has gone at fence number four. Once again, the horse is quickly up. Is so it, you can get too carried away and, and you can get too caught up the other here at the moment now, and cost you a lot of money. Earlier on, it Tom must take breaks. Now Even if you just trade every other okay. race or something so like that. Or of them take a break after every two or three races. Swindley bottom and now begin to make the run up the hill. And Glenn Forcer forces on now to a clear lead. That advantage just very quickly opened up now to the best part of six lengths as he crosses over I'm fence number five, followed uh, by one more flurry who part. took it in second place. And in third is Captain Chaos, followed on the inside by Sojourn. Vindication out wide. He's followed into the race by Jerry's back more money and also uh, Regal well, Encore. And back then Mr. Malarkey today, just but... looking for a little bit of racing room. On I'm the inside, he's checked through. it out. He's racing well, at the back of the field and pulling up. There now. is Vindication. Vindication has been pulled up before. Now I got it out quickly because Vindication got caught up, which meant other prices seven. had to come so in, so I had to close off. The winner in 2019 is out of the race, and so they go over the eighth which completes the climb up the hill and into the home straight. And it is Glenn Forcer and Gavin Sheehan with a clear 10-length lead now as they go through their first mile. One more Fleury is racing in second. Sojourn is in third. Captain Chaos is in fourth position. And then towards the outside... That building up on the back side and taking it As they continue their journey We've got the on now towards fence number nine. Glenn Forcer still clear of his field. One more Fleury so leads the main pack. A peck then in third Just by Sojourn. Just going to glance at the race time up there. You can see around third through the race. Towards what so will be the final fence so far, really. in a circuit's time. And this is fence number ten. Glenn We're Forcer... Sitting Again, to get the top three because it keeps changing. Quickly, he had a good look at it. One more flurry over in second. Sojourn is in third. Captain Chaos is in fourth. Then on the inside in fifth is Check It Out. Then towards the outside is Regal Encore, followed by it. Real Steel and Mr. Malarkey. There's been a lot of spikes Benny's in this race. Missed. And that was Benny King, and then Larry, who's towards the rear of the field with Didero Vallis. As they go now into the downhill section of the course, they will only be crossing three fences on this section of the course. So the that there, fence right at the for bottom a spike of at the, the hill, which would normally be fence 14. So the money's going to the back side. If it continues so and gets right the way down to below five, building up like that, then it'll be a place of the pass. And the bit. leader, Glenn Force, is still clear by the best part of 15 lengths. Sojourn over in second. One more flight. Flurry is in third. Regal Encore making ground on the outside of Captain Chaos. And now they go over the next. Another plain one. That was the 12th. And Bit still it's Glenn Forster and Gavin Sheehan, clear of Sojourn, who took it in second. Into third so place is Regal Encore, racing now towards the outside of Check It Out. The leader now at the it's final fence they'll take on this section of the course. Now he'll have to angle wide to go around fence 14. The leader is Glenn Forster. Over in second, Check It Out, followed by one more flurry, Sojourn, and then the red colours of Real Steel, who's trying to keep a little a closer in advance of Ben. King, and, and now they go That's on the, the long run towards what will be the sixth from home in the Bateau I'm of the here, man. Cup and Glenn Forcer still clear of his field. Well. Glenn Forcer into the turn. That lead is still at around about 15 lengths over the pursuers who are headed by Sojourn who is in second as they begin to oh, make the run up there. the hill. Check it out is in third. Regal Encore is in fourth. Off, actually, Real Steel in fifth. One more flurry. And then Larry picking up some places around the outside ahead of Benny's King and then Mr. Malarkey and still struggling at the back of the field are Didero Vallis and also Captain Chaos, the leader Glenn Forcer is over the second fence oh, on the uphill run here. at which in fourth position Real Steel I'm out of here, man. four out will be the final open ditch and Glenn Let's Forcer's lead is on. still about 12 lengths over check no, it out I'm over much. in second Sojourn in third when well held one more flurry made a bad okay, mistake that danger Over zone now. From home. And, and cancel Glenn that bit off. So I don't get about it. Very well. That was three his first significant three. error. <laughs> and now he's been Sucker. reeled in. And it's Glenn Forcer now. He's out in front by only five lengths to around the outside. Check it out. And on the inside, so it's like Glenn Forcer's going to get caught. In second and third. Larry continues Didn't get in there quick enough, unfortunately. Four. Regal Encore is now in fifth. In sixth is Real Steel. The others are a long way behind. And the complexion of the race, you fancy, is about to change. 
as it's Glenn Forcer still just with a tenuous lead. Larry Too late now to get outside, And Jamie Moore now take the lead and Larry goes on. Into second now is check it out. Glenn Forcer and then That's all right, Patty, they come towards the final yeah. fence and it is Larry who is clear by three lengths and he jumps it well. Larry is out in front to check it out in second. Regal Encore staying on into third and with another half furlong to go and never say die ride by Jamie Moore. Larry jumped Lovely very job. well early. He was last early, but he's first home Market in the suspended. London. So long I'll finish on that race. Oh yeah, that's another tenner in the bank. So I've not traded many races today, um, but you can see on Saturdays with these bigger races you can get a lot more free to book. Um, you know, seven quid there, one forty seven there. So I got tenner. Um, I've got a couple of low ones where I've been a bit greedy, but then I've also got a couple of high ones. So I only traded about four or five races, I think. So hey, five, I think. Um, and that'll be 40 quid for five races. Behind these is time. Echoes of Family, the final ditch coming up. This is three from home, but still a long way from home as Envoy Len jumps in front of Coco Beach. Back in third is Vado Forte, who's just trying to go in pursuit of this leading pair. Ferry Hill Run has come under pressure. Echoes of Family is next as the race now on the rise to bring them towards the top bend. That'll bring them on down towards the second last. And still continuing behind, as you know me too well, but it's Envoy Len and Rachel Blackmore on the inside of Coco match, Beach yeah. and Jack Kennedy. They're clear by still three or four lengths or more opening up now to well, got to be careful here is that Regan, front. who in turn is in front right of Ferry Hill Run has been taken Straight up by Echoes of Family and remain clear Full. from You Know Me Too Well they race round the top bend now and begin to descend they have two to jump and still a run before they get to the second last and in Voile Lane is just beginning to turn it on a little in front Coco Beach has come Those under pressure back and third is Vado Forte the moment, and this you can see like literally just from a couple of seconds switching over to a race down the hill. I wasn't even going to trade I just made and makes his way towards the with the overall lead at Clemencia as they very they shortly will be jumping moving around back through their point of departure. Clemencia from another theatre, then Bourbon Beauty along the inside. Mackenberg travelling strongly back in behind them. Donald McCain's having a very good day up at Mosselborough. Can he get a winner here at Weatherby as well as they come over the next flight? Not quite coming down to me. Seating the rider there was Golden Robin who uh, sent Ryan Mania skywards and he's out of here because I heard unseat the rider and as they know, I didn't know which horse it was. To be fair. Flight going down the back, another theater again. So you hear that, you best count your bets off in case the price goes treated because some well. horses like Ryan Manny is up on his you know, feet and seemingly going to affect the price, fine, especially if it's not the end of the back straight. And it is at Clemencia. It was nice to do, even though I've it's cost me money. That saves me money in the long run. Still catching the eye with the way that he's traveling Mackenberg. Bourbon Beauty is now shaken along towards the inside. Out wider on the course is our surprise. I'm out of here, man. Wow, the black jacket beige cap beginning to pick Sit Ryan off now again. and coming forward. Over to that one's inside is Pajero, eviscerating the grey is another who's moving sweetly. Half a piece, another who's been ridden from last place. Now. Coming forward now as they're galloping back towards the home straight. It looks pretty <laughs> wide open at this Sheriff Garrett is back pedaling. Angel of Harlem is struggling. Pen Pal looks unlikely to land a blow, and so too Weatherfront. And it's Mackenberg who's gone strongly through the there. race, who so now leads, but Rattle Owl moves into second place and looks mighty threatening without wider on the track our surprise has raced with plenty of enthusiasm throughout they came over the third flight from home Mackenberg over to the inside of Rattle Owl within behind them our surprise now half a piece in the light the that money starts match. to thunder yeah. home from a long way back and Rattle Owl falls Rattle Owl when holding every chance has crashed out at the second flight from the end and it's our surprise this is some performance from our surprise so we're at the with business of the, the race so I'm just not doing anything now, in now. Front on the approach to the final flight which that's me now bypassing half a piece is the threat towards the near side Mackenberg drops to third 150 yards That's to go me out again, the through line, our surprise that hands half a piece every chance towards Just the near to see side and half a photo. piece picks up our nah. surprise close home and from last to first it's half a piece who wins in the hands of market suspended is our surprise that was a massive run with back in behind the Mackenberg then Angel of if you look at that basically I've got three <laughs> trades in that race that's it three trades over all that time over five minutes and two seconds and they were all about just getting them in at the right time. Uh, one I cancelled off, obviously. Um, that would have been about that would have been a bit extra money if I didn't cancel it off. But I cancelled it off for the right reason. There was a faller in the race at the time when I was waiting for money to get back match, so I just got out um, in case the price came crashing in. And the other two were just quick trades at the right time. And you know, rather than going hammer and tongs and trying to get money through all the time, you just pick your moments, pick your races, and then pick your timing. And if you pick your race selection and timing correctly, that's how you make money in trading. Just don't try and trade everything all the time, because that will cost you.
Anyway, let's move on. Also ridden along is how's that Valtat and trekking with Paddy. He's having his bottom price, so to the field. They take the turn. Well inside the final mile now, and it's uphill towards home in the Stella Artois Novices Hurdle. Now I'm in front of that money there that's coming in front of Jamie back. Moore have the lead as they go now into the wings of the fourth. I'm happy with this at the moment, Showing even though there's that more. money's yeah, coming in, and that is literally just because super six. it's all small stakes. In second and yeah, trying to close. Like that, uh, road I'm out of here, man. Third, with Kandu Kid towards the outside on the inside. So I just missed it, didn't player. I? This is the third last. Shall we have one more being closed down by Super Six once again as now the leading group are beginning to bunch up once more as they enter the final three and a half furlongs and about to make the turn back Did to the last third in quick match start. Have one more just oh, man, man. Man. match Super typical in it. In second yeah, towards the inside high stakes. I'm going to go in this again but I'm going to go down at fours. Kid, and then between rivals peaking rose is in fifth. Mexico to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> 20 quid in there and he's matching. In seventh, that group of seven covered by only four six quid that still needs matching. Home straight, and here's the second last. Shall we have one more? Led there by about I'm going to hang on to it because it's got to come in a long way. Second, super six, Mexico continue to stay on. I'm sitting down here in case the price comes in and we matched up 12.55. That's that's how you do it. So you see. The reason why I wasn't I wasn't matched up there, but because I was in profit, because most of my money had been matched, I sat down here. Now this kangaroo kid, I'll turn the video off here. That could actually come back and win. Let's get it back on. Kid okay. On the outside of shall we have one more? And it is Kandu Kid who makes. So that Kandu Kid, suspended. look at that. So I've made twelve seventy three off um, laying it. Oh, I actually made a bit more than that. One, so I've got the extra. The odd but that's so important about getting your timing right again that's why i use the race timer because if i hadn't used the race timer, i'd gone in too late um and i hadn't closed that position off um i would have been at a deficit and if you notice previous to that well well it was looking like i was going to get matched i was sitting down nice and low in case it did come down and i was watching the figure up here to see where it was that gives me a good idea of where it was and then me out was about 12 pounds uh, and it was bouncing around about nine down to six, but I was sitting down where I had sort of about two, three quid in case I needed to get out and the market was going to come down so I could save some profit. But at the time it looked like I was going to get matched, so I stayed in. But that's a prime example why you need things like the race timer, or if not, you need to basically make sure you're getting out before the market goes crazy and before you get into that business end of the race. Because any horse can win, um, you don't know what it's got left, do you know what I mean, in the tank. When you get to that business in the race and, and if you're laying something before you know it you can go back and win and um trust me in my early days of training i don't happen a lot of times um getting things wrong uh without getting my timing right so yeah i highly recommend the race timer really do if you want to be able to do things like that and get out at the right time so you don't lose money and you end up making a profit like this is not bad is it 1276 1278 even for laying a winning horse came over the next flight with the leaders once yeah, again could be worth going in now for a few ticks so on they head to the flight which will be the last next so money using 10 pounds stake and at this tamar bridge who was set out five to take is not a lot i'm doing it because Pushed it's just above the crossover point well, and the market has been bouncing around quite a lot here, and there's 120 of at the back quid the below me a little flat i mean that isn't a lot of money so a circuit left to travel in this bet 365 novices hole uh, so this point tamar bridge has led for every step Quite close at the moment for second place. More on tour, just about second from in. Now yeah, that money has disappeared. Will it break the free? That's the thing. Half further away to Harry two to one. On board Hidden Heroics with over towards the inside. Recent there's not much else happening. Two length break back off those two Storm of Light. And I'm not gonna. I'm just side not side gonna go in at this. There's hardly any money there to get out against if it goes wrong. And there's more money. Turning left see that's building up on the far side of the track. Whether it's genuine or not, we don't know. Of this penultimate race on Bet 365. I'm going to go in again because the price is. And with the lead, it is still Tamar Bridge. One of two runners in the race. You see, I'm only using small states. Rolling along with a length in hand over in second position. 50p here and there, you know, it all adds up. You're getting every two quid, an extra two quid on the race. It's all adds up. By the end of the year, you'll find a lot of money. Going down the back, all across safely. And just opening up again a little here, Tamar Bridge is now two, two and a half lengths clear over more on. So as that favourite's coming in quite a bit. As the leader at that previous obstacle, Tamar is but wider out. Outside the price, a little bit more. Still going to stick with four ticks if we want to get matched properly. See that? The I'm watching what the favourite's doing, Price. Tamar Bridge, and I've got my finger over that X button. I'm out of here, man. They're all over it safely. 
And now on towards the final obstacle going down the line. Yeah, because of that money there. From home. Oh, no, it's gone out. So Tamar will we get a match quickly? More on tour and Calmore. And that time, Tamar Bridge yeah. just dived at the flight a little bit, but got away with it. It's not more what we wanted tour, to happen. However, so I'm just trying to close right up. Not a great deal to separate just the Just trying to close now. off at Calmore the moment. Next. Then over to the and I've actually Wolf given away my profits rather than risking the loss. We'll see how I did that. And that is the worst thing to do. And I'm out of here, man. Back to how's that Harris and Gareth Kale who's struggling in rear. So I'm making a left-handed run back towards the home straight. Still Tamar here. Bridge with the lead. With moving oh, through along his inside. Don't know if it come back down. It looks like it's just two running race really, doesn't it? Back in behind them, Cal Moore, who's now... <laughs> Zucker. ...around the turn. The brown and pink colours of Hidden Heroics, then up the inside Wolf Run. Storm of Light follows those, and then how's that, Harris? So we've got matched over there. Kale. They head into the home straight and kicking here, Tamar Bridge. Adrian Heskin getting a good response. Administers a couple of reminders, but that was what he wanted. Tamar Bridge has really opened up, going down towards three from home. Tamar Bridge flew that. A storm of light now staying on to press for second, goes into second. Back there in you go. We managed to get money off that storm of light in the end. Heroics is keeping on only at the one pace. Wolf run behind these. Tamar Bridge Just over the second of last that's really I'm going to put that down there for 15 quid, but it's unlikely. Well ahead to in second position, Very storm unlikely. of light. But there you go, 14 to an eight. You, you see, that was just. Flight. Tamar Bridge is at it now, and he's over it well. All that messing around, you know, I only make opinions, and, and you see why it's dodgy. I've sort of done it really to show you more than anything. And you can see just by getting two trades in the right place on Storm of Light, um, I've managed to put in like uh, what, what market on that? suspended one just on that one horse in profit, uh, where I only managed to get 10p on that in the end. So, yeah, just be careful in the market. Um, do you ever find that you, um, Make losses at the beginning of the day. Maybe you have a big loss at the start of the day. Market in play. And then you go on to end up just spending the day making that money back and end up breaking even or making a small profit or a small loss. Or alternatively, you find it the other way around where sometimes you have a good day, but at the end of the day, you end up blowing all your profits that you made or part of your profit. Doggly, doggly. Uh, percentage of it. And maybe you made like. 50 60 70 quid whatever but then after like one or two races where you screw up uh, you end up only making a tenner or maybe a small loss or something like that or even worse i can tell you exactly why that happens the reason it happens is because you're treating all races the same now usually at the start of um meetings that's where they have all the maiden races and stuff like that uh, sometimes i'm at the end as well uh, at the end they often have things like your national ha uh, hunt flat races in the middle of the afternoon, that's more likely when more punters are going to be betting. Um, more likely when, especially on a Saturday, when they're going to be on business TV channels like uh, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, uh, whatever. And so there's going to be more punters. So the reason you're doing that is you're selecting your races. And then you're just selecting, you're not selecting your races that you should be trading. What you need to do is cut out the places where you lose money. And that is often at the start of the day or at the end of the day. Uh, and focus on them better races. Um, and then try to make more money on them better races. Uh, and if you do that as well, you've got less time that you actually have to spend trading. So it's it's good for many reasons to do that. Now I'm looking at this last race at Weatherby. It might be the last one. One thing I'm scared of here is I've made £95.96 a day. I don't want to try and push it to £100 because that can make me lose. Just trying to, to do that. I've seen people that have made like, you know, £99.50 and just trying to make that push themselves to make an extra 50p because they want that hundred pounds uh, and end up blowing their whole bloody bank or all their profits or whatever just don't do it just accept what you got it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be a round number that's just a mental thing and all that mental thing anyway i'm gonna have a look at this race now it's a long race that's why i've been chattering on um and we'll see if we can make a few pennies on this one but like i say it's towards the end of the day there's obviously less people involved it's gonna be um sort of more jumpy um <laughs> So far, we've got uh, money matched of uh, just over 300 grand. And um, so that's not particularly good for a Saturday, which it is today. But, you know, that's what I'm used to during the week at the moment. Let's see what we can Chase do. next by So You Think So Again and uh, Harry Skelton. Finger so we've got a short so price favourite. Back in 2018, a little wider out. Market, and Grain Granger has caught up in between high. obstacles. So I'm just looking to try and lay something next, now because they look safely. how thin this market is. If someone wanted to drop, you know, if this horse was to go out the favourite or fall or something, 
clear and these runners are going to come in. Someone's just going to drop Paddy a grand and bring the price right together with cash yeah. to ash are the first two. So the that's what you've got to be really careful of because if you start laying at sixes Bracken and some of that happens, third. then you're going to be and looking at a massive loss. So you think so again? So you've got to be very careful. Another? And these type of races. And then See, look, finger on the six, switch. Six and quid there. There's nothing blowing. And now to the right the halfway down. stage. And fence number a two. Deer! Ten, number 10 of 19. This will be the last time. This there time round, it's Ask Paddy landing with a narrow lead. And perhaps a little less than flu at that time. So you think so again. Oh, oh. Small coming the pairs are going down blazer. low here. I'm but watching that price on the favourite constantly. I'm watching what that favourite's doing. That can affect our run. Obviously, we want the favourite to fall and win. And we're laying the other runners. Is now only six um, but we want our price to come in to match us up. The green, bounce back. Cash to ash in the pink. Cracking find in yellow colours back in third. Then blazer along the inside of Sigurd. And so you think so again. Pushing right up in between horses. Grange Ranger now overtaking finger on I've the got switch. my finger over the X they button. So if that runner falls. So I'm only about a second behind of checking the video. Back straight for final time. Point. Fences 11 through to live. 15 are coming up down here. Uh, so apart Numbers from track siders, will be the open ditches and it we will only have like probably not even a second like maybe. Um, here from a summer's break um, along the inside. Someone's got my finger on the X case happens up and cancel that. Cracking find is still People prominent as well up to I'm out of here man. Nick me off. So over the 11th they come. And all landing safely Can't say it enough so if you haven't got your finger over the X case. And cap now you should to have. Improve and gets to within around about three lengths of the leader. There you as go. They come towards so a little spike there. Ditch. Ask Paddy goes. Ask Paddy right. barely took off and badly hampered Sigurd. Sigurd has dropped right back to a pretty long last there. As they head on towards the next fence, oh, yeah. and it's cash to ash ahead of cracking. I wasn't sure who that was that with, fell, so but I, so I, I was going to put a, then a Blazer, money in that market. It would have actually helped me, but I didn't. As they head towards another, Sigurd continues on, but a very long last following that interference. Blazer blundered at the penultimate one. I'm out of here, man. Straight. Looking back, ask Paddy's rider. Jonathan England is up on I'm his feet. He's limping, but he's up. But we're getting towards that towards this is in the race, and I'd rather have to ash to crack two seventy. And lose the as they away. come oh, over this one, sense. so you think so again, landing in third. Grange Ranger just tickled the top, but he's now up into fourth place. Continues to improve. Further back, to <laughs> <the> <laughs> on the switch. Exactly. Yeah, come down Final to time us. at Weatherby today. They leave the back straight. Sigurd, after that interference, is trying to get back into the race and has overtaken Blazer at the rear. So galloping on for their final half a mile, they've got four more fences left to jump, and it is Cash to Ash under Tom Midgley, who's oh, been there all the way. There. So too, though, Cracking Find and Ryan Mania, but poised in behind them, so you think so again under Harry Skelton. The brown sleeves and cap, he's yet to really move. Grange Ranger along the inside has warmed to the task as the race has gone on. Then Sigurd and Finger on the I switch as they head down towards up. four from home, and it is Cash Which to Ash in front should. by a neck over Cracking Find. Cash to Ash in second place, go. Cracking Find. So you think so again in and that's it. Them. Now we're getting into Range that business Ranger end of the race. Long long the inside, we're in that red zone. And Blazer. Down they come to three um, so it's just not worth it because, like well I say, to, into second if that favourite doesn't win, falls, gets pulled up, whatever, by, so you something think else so could really screw you over. Uh, in behind and out wide is fire stream and still the last duo as they've been throughout our Rex of Temple alongside Esk de Lille racing up the hill on now in three quarters of a mile. Uh, I'm tempted. David Bass and Chianti Classico still have the advantage as they race on towards the final matched? five the furlongs question. to car dealer who's getting closer now in second place. In third is Whole Town Hero with on the outside fire stream. Nolliador towards the inside of Ernie Bilko. So we're matched, we just Cash. need matched on our exit. The last two I'm out of here, man. And Esca de Lille. And now they go into the turn with three furlongs to go. And it's Chianti Classico. Leads now by only a neck to card dealer in second. Two lengths away. <laughs> oh, making the turn in third. Around the outside is Fire Stream. On the inner is and we're Willy matched. Adore. Esther Cash has go. got a lot to Seven do quid. from Boy, there. just taking a horse. Final two furlongs. We don't expect to win early, getting a few tips on seven quid, uh, and that's how you took play a book market. Because so that we went in, uh, what did we go in actually? Was it fours for ten ticks? I wasn't too greedy. Four point four, getting out of five point four. You can see that actually did come through right the way down to three point five. So I could have been even more greedy and gone down to like maybe probably wouldn't, wouldn't have got my money match there, but maybe. A, 3-5 or something like that, and it would have been a nice... Market season. suspended. There wasn't anyone thinking about it, but that's a nice easy 7 seven pound twenty eight. 
I've purely been scalping today. A lot of people ask me, why do I trade in play? Well, I've started with a £100 bank today, and I've made £109.85. You show me any pre race trader that can double their bank in one day. Granted, you might be able to make more money, but I know like some of the bigger people, like Carnberry, for example, I believe he uses like a free £4,000 bank a day. £100 bank for me, £109. He might make more than me, but he won't double his bank, that's for sure. Maybe he might do his children or something, but that's about it. So, <clears throat> can I download this? So that's my PL. It's PL4 because I haven't deleted my other ones yet. Let's get rid of this. Uh, we'll open up uh, our uh, spreadsheet, import our data. Pretty straightforward. Import, just got to get through to downloads. Where are we? Downloads. Oh, I need to delete all these old files. These are just from the previous in the week. Open it up. And you can now see once it's loaded up. So today, it's all been jump racing. Um, it'll be national hunt that I've traded. Uh, that's where I've made my money. So five markets at Ascot for £34. Um, I did trade uh, down Royal, uh, which I gave up on yesterday, but because of uh, bigger markets today, uh, better markets today, um, if they were more profitable and worth trading, especially the feature race where I made 20 quid, and that's just scalping. Close that off. Oh, not all that off. I'm going to close down right off. Muscle bra. Um, you can see like various trades there from 209 to uh, uh, 583 is the top one, and then whether B as well. We trade that. Now that'll all add into my figures. So if I want to look at my graphs and so on, let's see. Let me see if I've traded more today. And the profits are back on the rise. This is the time that I've been ill recently, and you can see my profits are back up. So we're over that, another 100 quid today. Um, if you've got any questions, queries, if you need a copy of that spreadsheet, um, please hit the link below. You can have a look at it without buying it if you want to, or you can um, you can purchase it. I do highly recommend it. There's, there's no other way to be able to check out what you do in the markets, you know, um, and see everything, analyze what you're doing, cut out your losses and um, focus on the areas that you make money. Like I say, without this kind of information, it's impossible to do. You'll never be a successful trader if you can't analyse your figures. If you want a copy of the race timer that I use, there's two copies of the race timer. There's race timer one. You haven't seen me use that, that too much because I use that more for um, doing things like back to lays, which I haven't done so much recently, working where we are through the race. And then there's also race timer two. You get both copies supplied, they work side by side each other. Um, just drop me an email if you're interested in that. Let's close those down. And thirdly, um, there's a link below if you need a copy of the Geeks toy. If you want a copy of the Geeks toy, um, go through. if you go through my affiliate link, drop me an email. And if you want my setup, so you don't have to set it all up yourself and you get exactly, let's just open up a race. Um, hang on, that's an open market, let's not do that. So I'll pick one for later on. So I normally have it set up like that. Obviously, I have my Betfair video down here and the race time and that whole there. If you want it set up the same way that I do, so this is all organized for you. Um, I have it set up like this. You can have it set up so you can see various other graphs and stuff as well. I set it up like this because it's the best way to have it in play. Um, Betfair graphs mean nothing when you're in play. They're too far behind. And... Um, so you can have things I have the multi bet tool there you can use if you want to do that kind of trading um, it's all set up there all you've got to do is click on here show high what a lot of people use is the market overview this is really handy if you're pre-race trading so you've what the markets are done they're flat at the moment just where it says it started these to me I don't need to use up any extra CPU usage um, when I'm recording for you because I don't really use these so much but they're all there just on the click of a button and if you want it all set up the way I do honestly just drop me an email and I'll give you a download link uh, for nothing if you go through my uh, affiliate uh, link to do that if you have any other questions just drop me a, uh, a message um, or drop me an email um, it might take me a little bit of time to get back to you but I try to get back to everybody every single person that drops me a message I'll always get back to you 
and I'll always help you out as much as I can. Introducing Geek's Toy Trading Software, the fastest, most customizable, and most popular software for betting and trading on Betfair and BetDAC. Designed by professional traders for you. Key features include unlimited desktop settings and the ability to create custom profiles to suit every user's needs. Unbeatable speed, real-time prices and one-click betting. Unique management of multiple markets. You can bet or trade on multiple sporting events simultaneously. Support for eight languages. Context-driven help on every window. Searching and bookmaking, training mode, advanced charting, enhanced navigation, support for Betfair coupons, stop loss and more. Geek's Toy, possibly the best Betfair and BetDAC trading software in the world.